Hello and welcome to a new video about alternating current. Last time we talked about what alternating current is. Now we know yeah, that there are pulsating values, maybe, yeah, that there are alternating values, that there are even direct values and they all fulfill, but they all fulfill the condition that is uh, periodically. Okay, so we have periodically values. So this value might change over time. Or it will change over time. That's the characteristic of alternating current. Yeah, it, it's repeating itself, but it's changing over time. So with just one value, which value should I give? The value at the beginning, the maximum value, the value at the end, the maximum and the minimum value. What? 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 Yeah? Today I want to show you some values we might know. Yeah, or can calculate. And then we can decide which one has the most sense. Yeah. So one thing we already talked last time, it's the average value. Okay, mean value, average value. The average value, the symbol of the average value is x for the variable with little bar yeah? and we said okay we're taking the value at a certain point time x multiply how long this value is at this level yeah and we summarize all those things from zero to the whole periodic duration yeah and then we divide by the periodic duration we have the average value so if we at one point we have one millisecond we have one volt then we have three milliseconds two volts then we have one millisecond minus two volts so i take all this yeah, multiply by the duration we take yeah, it takes and divide them by the total periodic duration yeah, then we can calculate the average value and if this average value is zero we know we have an alternating quantity. If this average value is not zero, we know we have a pulsating quantity. And that's about it. Yeah. And if it's not in segments, yeah, maybe you can solve rectangles, you can solve uh, triangles, yeah. but if, if it's for instance a sinus wave, yeah, which is very common, then we are at the end. Yeah. What if this is some common function, yeah? some some functions with some function simply, not just steps. Yeah? Then we have to do the following thinking. We say, okay, we're not we are not summarizing all parts. We are segmenting my fun in our function in very small, very small rectangles, and and these rectangles are, they are that tiny that they are just just there, yeah? Unimaginable small, but just there. Then this is uh, an infinitesimal transition and we no longer write delta t, we write dt. Okay, so this is this very, very small delta t. Of course, we have to multiply with x from t. And then we have to summarize all those small stripes. And we don't write on the sum sign, we do write a big S we call it integral from null bis from 0 to the periodic duration and of course this the, that's it hmm? so average value of with uh, infinitesimal transition now it's a so called integral and well, average value but you cannot tell you i mean here average value is zero if it like last time I already said if i touch this in the, in the power sockets, I probably hurt myself. So, there's another thing. The other thing is called rectified value. This rectified value Symbol P 
Because actually it's, ex it's exactly the same. Here we summarize, we divide, we use this x from t multiplied by a delta time, but we're not using x from t, we're using the absolute value of x from t. Yeah? So also negative value will count as positive. Yeah? This means yeah, all things will add up and I can tell if something is big or not that big. Yeah? Here they are eliminating itself. Here they are summarizing. Yeah? So also here after the from 0 to from 0 to t, after the infinitesimal transition, we have here average value from x dt. That's the rectified value. Yeah? So the rectified value already shows if something is big or small. Yeah? But do you remember how we calculated the power? Power was voltage multiplied by current, u multiplied by i. Taking into account the Ohm's law, it was u squared divided by r, or r squared, r squared multiplied by r. We have the square. So double the voltage does not mean double the power. Double the voltage means quarter, ah, uh, quarter, four times the power, of course. Yeah? Half, the, half the voltage means quarter of the power. This is not suitable for, say, how effective a voltage is, because also the small parts simply add up. Yeah? But the small parts, you know, they are not that important because they really do not bring that much power inside. If I want to compare alternating current with direct current, I need to somehow tell how effective a value is. And therefore, is the effective value. Effective value. Or often call are often called root mean square. Huh? RMS. Yeah? This already tells what we have to be calculating. So our effective value, this the symbol is a big, the big symbol. Uh, the big letter of the of the symbol, yeah? yeah, and this is now we summarize again over the whole, yeah, multiply again by this delta t, and this time we are not taking x from t, we're taking x squared, yeah, and then of course we do the we do the average value again, mean square, yeah, and root. This root is still missing. Yeah, because right now I would have, I don't know, m squared. Of, but so we make a root, square root. Yeah? Now we have amps or volts or whatever x is. Yeah? That's the effective value. If you want to write it, For every function, it would look like this. Effective value. Hmm. This tells how effective. Here we said we have uh, 230 volts inside, and these 230 volts, they are the effective value, uh, the root mean square, and this is as effective as it would be for 230 volt, as powerful uh, as would be 230 volt of direct current inside. Now let's have a look. <sighs> Often we are using sine waves, yeah. And what is this x from t for a sine wave? Yeah, here I tried to draw a sine wave. Yeah? So this is our x from t, shall be. Yeah? So our x from t, we want to write it down. X from t equals. Yeah? We have some sine. 
Mm -hmm. And the sign is changing between minus 1 and 1. Huh? It's going up to 1 and it's going down to minus 1. Here it's going up to some, some peak value, yeah? some amplitude. Yeah? And this peak value I have to multiply with this. Yeah? So this x is called amplitude. Also peak value. In, in pulsating things, you have to be careful with this peak value. Amplitude is somehow nicer. So we have sinus, and then we have some angle, right? And we somehow have to determine how fast this is changing. And therefore, we're using a circular frequency omega and a, and a time t. Yeah? So omega is the circular frequency with the normal normal frequency repeating by second we have omega equals 2 pi f okay so in here we would have uh, 50 hertz and our omega would be 2 pi multiplied by 50 uh, because 2 pi is a full rotation and I need this radiant here for my sinus function. Okay? Right now, yeah, our sinus would start here yeah, at zero. And what if I want to offset? Nobody said it must start here. Nobody. So if we want an offset, we have to simply add an offset here. Yeah? It's the zero phase angle, phase shift, zero phase shift at zero time, yeah? how many radiant we, are, we have divergence. And this stuff here, yeah? this is called phi equals omega d plus phi x, so exactly what is inside our sinus here, this is called phase, phase, okay? Yeah, so this is describing a sine wave. Right? And where is this? Where is this? Yeah. Let's calculate the effective value of a sine wave. Yeah. Let's try this once. Yeah. Now that we know what is x from d, why not? Yeah. So let's make an example. And I want to make it easy. Yeah. So, look at that, I will say the amplitude is 1. Yeah? I will say we have no, no zero phase, yeah? zero. Yeah? And my circular frequency is 1. So actually what is at the end, x from t equals sinus from t. That's, that's our example, right? Now we want to know the effective value. Well, we had this x equals, what was this again? I'm using this formula now. Yeah. Square root of 1 divided by t, integral from 0 to t, from x squared t dt. Mm -hmm. So in our case, sine squared t dt. This we have to calculate. Right? And now, now I'm grabbing a new sheet of paper. Because what we want to calculate is integral 0 to t sine squared from t 
Titi. Only this part, this inner part, we want to calculate. Why I'm grabbing a new sheet of paper? Because you will see, mm -hmm, okay, there's something to do. So actually we could say that sinus from T multiplied by sinus from T. Dt. Huh? Now we have this chain law. Yeah? So we say that's G dash and that's F. Hmm? So what is now our G from T? Cosinus is minus sinus, so this must be minus cosinus. And our F dash from T? Sinus derived is cosinus. So let's see what is left. First, I need to, to use G from T. G from T is minus cosinus. Multiplied by F from T. Huh? This is sinus. And then we have minus integral 0 to t. And inside the integral, we just shift in this. So we have g from t. This again minus cosinus. Multiplied by f derived. Yeah? f derived is cosinus. That's it. Huh? So let's write this once again. We have minus cosinus from, from t, sinus from t, and here plus integral 0 t cosinus multiplied by cosinus, cosinus squared t dt. Good, huh? Now we have not just a sinus squared, we have a cosinus squared and other stuff. <laughs> Does it look easier? Not yet. No. Let's have a look at this cosinus, cosinus squared and stuff and stuff. Yeah. Well, let's make the unit circle. Here's the unit circle. So we have here one, we have here one, there's the circle. We have here one, radius is one. Now let's have a look. What is this? This is, if we have here, the angle alpha. This is a uh, sinus. And what is this? That is cosinus. Cosinus. Mm -hmm. And here we have 90 degree. So this means Pythagoras sinus squared from alpha plus cosinus squared from alpha equals 1 squared 1. This means cosinus squared from alpha equals 1 minus sinus squared from alpha. And what is true for alpha is also true for here. Huh? So let's use this new stuff and say integral 0 from t sinus squared t t t equals minus cosinus from t, sinus from t, plus integral from 0 to, 0 to t, 1 minus sinus squared d dt. Hmm? Equals minus cosinus from t, 
sinus from t plus integral from 0 to t 1 dt minus integral 0 to t sinus squared from t dt. This is just t. Yeah? So this is actually minus cosinus from t sinus from t plus t minus integral from 0 to t sinus squared from t dt. And what is on the other end of this equation? This is still integral from sinus squared d dt. Ooh, this I bring to the other to the other side and have here two sinus squared. Yeah? So I have here two times integral zero from t sinus squared d dt. This and what is left on this side is t minus cosinus from t sinus from t between 0 and t. Mm, well, let's calculate this. Upper, upper border minus lower border. So we have here t minus cosinus from t sinus from t and now minus 0, minus and minus is plus, plus cosinus from 0, sinus from 0. Hmm. Cosinus from t is 1, sinus from t is 0. Cosinus from 0 is 1, sinus from 0 is 0. Yeah. What is left equals Because this is 0, 0, 0, what is left is t. So, in conclusio, integral from 0 to t sine squared t t t equals periodic duration divided by 2. This is what we found out. Yeah. And this is, where is it? Here. What are we going to use here? Yeah? I write it down with integral of 0 to t sine squared t dt equals, what was this? t half. Huh? Okay, get rid of this. Let's see what is the result if I write this in here. Our x equals 1 divided by t multiplied by t divided by 2 Ooh, you, 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 there's not much left equals square root 1 of 1 half and this equals 1 divided by square root of 2 now if we would have here it is not 1 yeah, but something, yeah. Then we would read, uh, we would see uh, for sinus shaped alternating quantities. x, the effective value, value equals x, the amplitude, divided by square root of 2. x, the amplitude, equals the effective value, multiplied by the square root of 2. Okay? So if we say in here we have 230 volts, then the maximum, the peak value is not 230 volts, it's 230 volts multiplied by the square root of 2. Much higher! Much higher! Huh? So here we are much higher. The effective value is not that high because simply the small values here they do not really bring too much power because of the square. Yeah? So the effective value, the mean root square is factor square root of 2 smaller than the peak value.
Yeah? But now we have seen where this is coming from, right? Here. This was where this was coming from. This is a... Now I'm really, really losing, losing track of all my... my <laughs> here. Of all my sheets. Yeah? It's just valid for uh, sinus functions because it's coming of this because we had this sinus squared here. This this is what we done, what we've done here. Sinus squared. That that's 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 it. And there the root, this the square root of two, is appearing. Yeah? So if we do have other, then other functions than, than sinus, sine waves, we have to use, we cannot use square root of 2. Yeah? It's important to know. Yeah? Because a lot of times you hear, yeah, it's square root of 2. Yeah. No, only in sine waves. And only in case there's alternating uh, quantities. If this is a pulsating quantity, also not. Good. So this was the time behavior and parameters. If we are not mentioning anything else, then a mentioned value is always the effective value of a sinus shaped signal is always the effective value. Okay. And since uh, effect, uh, sinus shaped waves are very important to us, it's not that easy to, to calculate with sine waves. Yeah? Well, one sine wave, all right. Yeah? More sine waves, multiply them, sub summarize them, substitute them. It's not that easy. Yeah? So next time we will talk about how we can represent a sine wave different, in a different form, which makes us easier to handle them. Yeah? Next time, variant of sinus, sinus sinusoidal. <laughs> Quantities. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.